Hey, Steve Soretsky here. Uh, as always, this is the Canadian Real Estate Market Update uh, with a focus on Vancouver. Uh, this video is coming to you a day late. Uh, the reason for that is all future videos will now be posted on Saturdays. Uh, so these market update videos are gonna be posted on Saturdays. Uh, the reason being, basically I've decided to add in a video editor who's basically gonna clip in uh, charts and graphs overlaying on top of uh, you know when I'm speaking just to provide you know a little bit more value but maybe a little bit more entertainment and knowledge uh, info for you um, I just figured it'd be a nice added bonus so basically what I'm gonna do is obviously recap the market uh, every Friday when the all the financial news basically comes out and then uh, these are gonna edit it and then we're gonna upload it on Saturday so that's the plan moving forward um, so, I mean, obviously love your feedback on that, but that's, that's sort of the plan. If you like in these videos, obviously hit subscribe, thumbs up. I appreciate the support. And, uh, in the next couple days, I'll be doing a Vancouver real estate market update. I know a lot of people have been asking, uh, what the market is doing. Obviously we had the mortgage stress test come in in January. So everybody's sort of waiting for that, uh, to see how that shakes, you know, shapes up. Uh, like as I've been saying though, I mean, the majority of people are on 120 day rate holds, um, and so I think you're, you're really gonna take some time for that mortgage stress just to work its way through the system. I think we had a lot of panic buying, uh, a lot of panic registrations for mortgages and all that sort of thing in December uh, that looks to be continuing in January. And you know, the activity, particularly in the condo market has just been insane. Uh, you know, a couple quick stories I'll touch on and then I'll leave that for the market update video. Um, but again, this is mostly in the Fraser Valley. That's where like all these locals are just, you know, a lot of first time buyers, basically just a huge fear of missing out. Um, where I had one realtor tell me there was, he was in a multiple offer in a one bedroom in Abbotsford. Uh, there was eight offers, four of them were subject free. Uh, this was like an older leakier building. Um, and it went like $50,000 over ask. Uh, another realtor in my office was in, involved in a two bedroom multiple offer in Maple Ridge. Uh, that received 15 offers and uh, you know again I mean that's Maple Ridge right like that's you're talking an hour outside of Vancouver now so it's really become that drive to qualify um, I think that again people are, are making rush decisions with these new mortgage stress tests uh, so I do think the next couple of months are gonna be busy and then we'll sort of wait to see how things play out but I think that in terms of mortgage stress tests and impacts I don't think that's I still believe that um, you know that might not come in to really play until like the summer. Um, but again, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Um, couple things in the news, uh, that I want to touch on, uh, pension funds buying up mortgage, Canadian mortgage debt. Um, you know, they have a, basically a mandate to, these pension funds have a mandate to buy up a certain percentage of the portfolio of, uh, debt. And, um, you know, they can't all be invested in the stock market, obviously. So they're now switching a lot of it to Canadian mortgage debt. Obviously, is the the bond market has been relatively unattractive uh, for quite some time. So they're basically going towards Canadian mortgages. And you know, some people say, "Oh, that's like super risky." But at the end of the day, is these Canadian mortgages are all backed by the Canadian government, aka you, the taxpayer. Uh, so obviously, if anything goes like that, uh, it's really just more incentive for the Canadian government to make sure that people are made whole on that, uh, particularly when pension funds, which are already underfunded, uh, are now heavily invested in Canadian mortgages. Um, and you know, ultimately at the end of the day, you know, the Canadian pension fund bought up, their increase in mortgage debt increased by 38% on a year over year basis. It was just like astronomical. Uh, that ultimately helps liquidify the system in terms of banks being able to supply more and more mortgages, right? Like the more that they can get off their books and have pension funds buying up, the more they can keep issuing uh, to, you know, to new buyers and that sort of thing. So that's basically the impact of these pension funds buying up uh, excessive amounts of, of Canadian mortgage debt. Um, so yeah, something to watch for. Again, you know, the numbers are, speak for themselves. Um, Another thing, the, the Green Party released their, uh, I believe it was their financial budget, their housing platform that they are now pushing for. I'm not really sure how much pull they have on that. Obviously, the NDP is coming out, I believe it's February 20th, with a new budget. And basically, that's where they're going to talk about their proposed housing platforms that I think they're going to push through. 
Uh, obviously, people have been waiting a long time for that, so that's going to be a really, really important day. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the Greens platform, I don't like to get political because I don't. I think that's a very losing proposition in terms of you know, what you want or, or to get political. So I try to avoid that stuff. I try to focus on what I can do personally uh, and just adapt the situation, right? Like if somebody was to implement a foreign buyer's ban, which the green has lobbied for, that's in their platform, then I'll obviously just move and adjust to that. Uh, and so will my clients. But, um, you know, I understand everybody's frustration behind that. I think the greens came out, their platform was just incredibly aggressive. It was a they want to, they basically said they're going to ban, they want to ban foreign buy, foreign buyers or foreign ownership. Uh, they want to ban foreign ownership of ALR land. They wanted to uh, ban the loophole of bear trusts in real estate so they can get full identity of that. Um, what else? There's, there's a whole bunch, I'll, I'll put it up here. But, you know, basically, end of the day, it's a very aggressive platform. There's no question if that was implemented that house prices would fall. Um, but again, you know, whether or not that actually makes homes more affordable is another question because I think that, you know, when BC's economy is roughly 25% of its GDP is in real estate, uh, there would be, an as house prices come down, there would be an extreme amount of, uh, you know, you would enter a recession for sure. Um, you'd have a lot of job layoffs. So I think, you know, at the end of the day, you need, a house, you need a job to buy a house. Now, I'm not saying that they shouldn't intervene and there shouldn't be more policies in the housing market. Um, you know, that's that's up for debate, but you know, it's interesting to hear the feedback online. Uh, it's interesting to see where people's mindsets are in terms of, um, really it's becoming more, and this is happening on a global la on a global scale, seeing more and more protectionism, uh, more and more borders being closed up, right? Um, it's really interesting because there's a lot of support for that green platform, which is a total ban on foreign ownership. Um, but someone made an interesting comment the other day, it was like, if Donald Trump had said that, there would be massive uproar, like CNN would just be going off the charts, like, hey, Donald Trump's gonna buy, ban foreign ownership, and that, you know, obviously that would include Canadians coming in and buying winter homes, right? Um, but, you know, the fact that Andrew Weaver of the Green said it, it seemed to sort of just slide under the radar, and nobody really talked about it. Um, and, you know, quite frankly, there's a lot of support for it. But you can sort of see where everything is happening, right? As you ha you're in an economy where housing prices are, are growing exponentially and wages are flat. Uh, it's really just becoming a situation where everybody is trying to close up, trying to close up borders and slow down that globalization. So, uh, you know, interesting trend. Uh, again, I'm not trying to get too political on this, but um, that was the platform they campaigned on. I think that the NDP, personally, on February 20th, my guess, I don't know what they're going to do. My guess is they move towards some sort of speculation tax, whether that's you know, hey, if you buy a home, you have to hold it for three or four years before you can sell it without being taxed a certain percent. I think that's the route they're going to go. Um, you know, obviously we already have a capital gains tax, uh, which can be applied if you're flipping properties. But um, I think that they'll get more aggressive on that stance. Um, I would like to see them obviously ban bear trust. Um, ownership uh, which is banned already in Ontario so I don't know why it's still here but anyways that's neither here nor there uh, you know last but not least is really just financial conditions I mean as we've talked about the these multiple offers at the start of the video in, in Abbotsford to Maple Ridge um, just the, the amount of liquidity that central banks have really pumped into these markets um, you know financial conditions have never been this loose uh, really in, in quite some time and so you can see that not only with uh, you know the stock market and bond prices and real estate prices globally everything is and, and even Bitcoin all that stuff and up until recently has been hitting new highs right um, so it's interesting the old uh, Fed chair I'm sure a lot of people know Alan Greenspan uh, who was infamous for the 2000 uh, stock market bubble recently came out an interview the guy's like 90 years old and i don't know he's just clinging on but uh he says he believes there's a, a bubble in the stock and bond markets which you know is interesting coming from a guy who really was arguably responsible for grow blowing the last two huge bubbles in the stock market in 2000 and the housing bubble in 2008 uh but you know anytime that guy speaks it's it's it is quite interesting so he was on bloomberg 
the other day talking about that and and that just to me is on like a macro level and then you can obviously tie it back into Vancouver and just see like the amount of exuberance out there uh, that we're seeing so yeah anyways uh, that's all I got uh, hopefully these you like these edits love some feedback if you have any comments put them below uh, if not it'll be I'll see you next Saturday from here on out all right take care